Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to give you the ultimate tutorial on Gaussian splats. I'll show you how to make them, trim them, rotate them, mesh them and import into Unreal Engine with collisions all using totally free software and not uploading your images anywhere. I'd previously stayed away from splats as I thought you could not edit them, get collisions or generally work with them in the engine, but I think I may have been wrong. Watch to find out. So if you look for any tutorials on YouTube, generally Luma AI comes up and it's a fantastic app available on iOS and it also has a web version. And what this will allow is basically you to upload your own images or videos taken on an iPhone and even on a normal camera, normal video on the web version and turn it into a Gaussian splat. Here you can upload and view other people's. It's very, very easy to use and it's very, very popular. And indeed I believe the Gaussian splat uh, side of it is free and I have another video showing how you can bring it into Unreal Engine. Arrival is Polycam which also features Gaussian splatting and I believe is free to use as long as you have an account. It also has some great photogrammetry features that I'll go into another video. My biggest issue with Luma AI is this in the terms and conditions and if you read that that pretty much means that any content that you put up there belongs to Luma AI and they can copy it and promote it and use it to train other models and so forth. I'm gonna show you a method that uses your own machine and you get to keep your own data and you have far more control over your splat. It's from this website and there's a great tutorial on YouTube linked here which tells you everything you need to know. So to follow this, you're going to need two things. First of all, you're gonna need quite a hefty graphics card and you're gonna need some hard drive space. It tells you here you need 24 gigabytes. I managed to do it on 16, but previously when I'd ran nerfs on eight gigabytes, I'd had some problems with not being able to process large data sets. The sets I'm gonna produce for this video are gonna be relatively small. And they're gonna be from still images. I'm not gonna go through the entire installation process cause the video describes it very clearly, but I will tell you where it didn't work so well for me. This software Pinocchio that they ask you to install pretty much does everything for you and downloads everything that you need on here. If you have Visual Studio, I believe 2019 is better. If you've got a newer version, you might have some issues. I had 2019 on here already. Also, the thing I had a problem with was CUDA itself. This, I think, tells you to download 11.6. I had to manually download it. I just downloaded it from here. 11.8 apparently, I could be wrong again, somebody correct me, but this seemed to work for me. You're going to have to be familiar with the command prompt and typing commands in the command prompt and potentially changing directory, things like CD, DIR, things like that. You can follow this tutorial and if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to ask me. They do have a Discord, however. Now the other place where you may have some errors could be with installing some of these Python libraries. If you familiarize yourself with pip install, and you Google any errors you're getting, generally it will get the job done. Once everything is done, you should be able to launch Pinocchio and click on the start button to bring up a terminal, which will browse for a folder of images to get you started. Now I mentioned before CD and DIR. DIR, these are just terminal commands. DIR just shows you the contents of a folder and CD will enable you to change directory. CD dot dot lets you go back one and if I want to change back into this folder, I can just use Control C, Control V. Up arrow brings up the last command as well. That's pretty much all you need to know for terminal for this. Now I should also be able to put this path into Explorer. And here is where I want my images. Now the tutorial specifies that you should put them in this folder structure and this was where I had most errors. Now I am using some very washed out images I took of a burnt car a long time ago on a Sony A6000 camera. And some of them are a bit rubbish, very overexposed and there was sun coming, direct sunlight coming from beyond that tree. So I've got some shadows falling on the vehicle here, which is far from ideal, but this is the data set we're gonna use here. And again, it's just pixelating out here on the actual images when you get close to some of these. I think these are 24 megapixel each. And I got 210 of these images. So I put them in that input folder. And according to this, what I need to do next is to do the convert part where we use call map. And if I just copy this command, and paste that in with my folder structure here, yeah? And here's what I made earlier. This is the images processing for Colmap. 
I'm going to fast forward this and we're going to see how long this takes. So once that step is done, we can run the next command, which is the which is this one here to train the images. This is going to take a little longer, but I'll show you this now sped up. And in my case, it rescaled the images to 1.6K. I didn't put them in their native resolution, and I'm not sure what happens if you do. This could be something else for another test, just to see if I can get slightly better results. But for this one, it gave me the message that it was rescaling the images to 1.6K, and I went ahead with that. So about half an hour for that to finish. And to run the viewer, we run this command in the terminal. And there's the Gaussian splat. Now, please somebody tell me how I can just pan and orbit this like a normal 3D application. I tried Control, Alt, Shift, both mice buttons. Eventually I got WASD working here. As with all Gaussian splats I've seen from far, it does look good. And it's getting some of that distance in some of the objects in, in the distance there with some clarity. So for a backplate or something like that in VFX, this would be pretty cool. And as we zoom out, we start to see these cloudy artifacts. And the next step, I'm going to show you how to get rid of these. Now, the greatest thing I saw for this was the Play Canvas Super Splat. So I'm just going to upload my file there. And in my output folder, just import the PLY file. Now you'll see there's a lot captured here. And at first sight, it can be quite hard to find out what you're doing here. But this I find to be a far greater tool than the previous one. The right mouse button pans, the left mouse button orbits, and the middle mouse button seems to zoom in and zoom out. Or you can scroll that in. So that just works intuitively for me. Whoever designed this had used 3D software before. If I want to see this without the points, I can bring this splat size down. And very quickly, I can see the area that I need to focus on here. That's the bit I want. I don't want any of this other nonsense in the background. So what I'm going to do is zoom right out here. And when you're on one of these tools, like the rectangle, you cannot move anymore. You can only zoom in and zoom out. At least that's what I think. So I'm going to highlight these. And if I bring the splat size up here a little bit, I can see what I'm selecting. And then delete selected splats. It really is as simple as that. I can zoom out again. I'm going to do the same here. Delete selected splats. I can also use this brush tool where I can use the square brackets. Really intuitive here to just paint out the bits that I don't want. Yeah. So I'm going to go in here and just paint off all of this bit here. And when I'm done, I'm just going to click Delete Selected Splats. Click off of that and see what else we need to remove here. That's worked really well so far. Now, as with all splats, you get these kind of stripy lines in the areas outside of it, which I'm not a big fan of. So I'm just going to go in and trim some of these off as well. So when I'm done, I'm going to download a PLY file here. You can use a compressed PLY. And in fact, Play Canvas has got a file viewer where you can upload that. And it's, in my case, about 20 times smaller file that you can view it. But we are going to try and import into Unreal. And for that, I'm just going to go with the PLY option and use this excellent plugin here, which will allow me to bring in my Gaussian Splat without paying any money on the marketplace. The documentation for this pretty much tells you how to get up and going, but you want to download the version for the version of Unreal you're using. So I'm using 5.3, so I just click the latest here and download it to 5.3 zip. Once that is done, we want to extract the contents of that and paste it into our and paste it into our plugins folder here. And when we start Unreal Engine, we just have to activate that plugin. I'll show you how to do that quickly. So we're going to plugins here and just search for XV. VDGS, make sure this is on, restart your Unreal. And when you're back in again, you should have this X window here, which should just let you import the PLY. Import it, and if you've done everything correctly, it should just give you a blueprint class here where you can double click and have a little look at your Gaussian inside Unreal. Now, I am going to quickly set up this scene with Ultra Dynamic Sky and show you what it looks like.
So, so far I've only showed you the Play Canvas Super Splat tool, but how do we do a little bit more with our Point Cloud or our PLY? I use something called Cloud Compare, which again is free and open source. There is a little thing here where your Point Cloud needs to be converted in order to run it inside this. And I found this out for doing a little bit of research. So if you want the Point Cloud to go back into Unreal, you need to convert it to Cloud Compare format and then convert it back to FreeDGS again in order to import into Unreal. Luckily, someone very clever has made a plugin to do this. What you need to do with this is to install this from the Git and type in this command in order to change it to your Cloud Compare format. So whenever you've got your PLY, directly from your command prompt as I showed you earlier, you can type in this command. He's missing the free D off this, so make sure you put free DGS on here. They convert it into the point cloud that will work with Cloud Compare. And then once you're done with Cloud Compare, which I'm going to show you what to do with it there, you can convert it back to free DGS again. And to confirm I have tried this and it works. So on to Cloud Compare, I'm going to go into open here and I'm going to show you some of the things you can do with this. First thing we're going to do is just to click on on the side here and then I can use this tool here to rotate it. I can snap to a view along here and then I can go to my rotation here and press the left mouse button to rotate this where I want it. When we're done we hit this tick. This interface takes a little bit of getting used to but once you've got it and used it a couple of times it starts to make a bit of sense. What I'm going to do here is rotate this one again so I'm going to go back into the rotate tool and this time I'm going to rotate on the x-axis and I can bring that round like that. As I say, it gets a bit of getting used to. But what this will do is just have your point cloud hopefully flat on the floor so you don't have to do this in Unreal or anything else afterwards. Final rotation, this time on the Y axis. I find it easiest just to rotate in 2D mode here. When we're done, we'll hit that tick. Right, now for some more editing. If I want to trim, I can use these scissors here and I can make a rectangular selection along here. So I'm going to cut off this grass. I didn't do this before. When I've got that, I can click here to segment out, and then I can click delete to get rid of that. And there is another option. Let's push it into the top view here, where I can actually make a polygon selection here. And one thing you'll notice that this differs with the Play Canvas one is that it shows you a lot more detail closer up. So I'm going to get rid of that, delete that. And then we are going to go back into just moving it with the left mouse button, panning with the right mouse button. And if we zoom in closer on this one, we can actually see some of these points that were a little bit harder to see on the Play Canvas tool. And we can trim that out if we need to. Now I'm just going to revert to my model before the trimming and show you how to mesh this. The first thing I had to do for mine was go into Edit Normals and Compute because it wouldn't mesh if I didn't do this. Somebody else might know this software better than me. I'm really just starting to use this. So if you do, let me know in the comments. The next thing to make it into a mesh is I'm going to Plugins, press on Recon, and you can play around with this Octree depth here. Maybe choose nine instead. Let's see how that looks. Still 430,000 verts, but that will do for this. And I, I, you can probably do mesh decimation, reduce the number of polys and stuff in here. But as I'm just starting to use this, I'm just going to export this out and bring it into Blender. Now, STL worked best for me. This is not a common format. There is FBX options, but I found when I export as FBX, it didn't keep the position. And that's quite important for me. So I'm just going to import it into my favorite 3D modeler Blender. Key thing here is to make sure you're not doing any rotations or anything like that. The only thing I want to do here is some trimming. You don't even have to do that. Depends on your model, but I just want my collision to be the body of this car. So I'm just going to trim away these points. You can watch my previous videos to see how to do this. When I'm done with that, I am just going to go into my modifiers here and just put a decimate on that. Very low poly is what I'm aiming for. That's just about right there. I'll apply that. Now one thing you may want to do just quickly before we export this is just to check the face orientation. If you're having any problems in Unreal with the collision or with it just showing as invisible, just click on this button here and go to face orientation. If it's red, it means the faces are inverted. So I'm just going to go into edit mode, select all the faces, F3, and 
just type in recalculate outside and that'll make everything blue again. That's what you want when you're exporting. So I'm just going to go ahead and export this in FBX now and import this back into Unreal Engine. Now what I want to do to set that collision is I want to click on my Gaussian and then when I go into the blueprint here, I want to go into components in the top left hand corner and add a static mesh. And to that static mesh over here, I want to assign that file I've brought from Blender. Now first I'm just going to double click on this and just check everything is okay and then assign a collision. To do this, I can go down here and choose Use complex collision here and then save and then here I need to make sure that this is matching the position of my mesh and in this case it's not that's probably something to do with the way I exported it in blender but I found out if you just go to minus 90 and 90 here it should match exactly where your mesh is the last thing I want to do is just hide this so it's not visible because we only want to use it as a collision so I'm going to go into visible and just turn that off I'll compile this and then I'm just going to drop in a first person character quickly. I'm really doing this rough and ready. And I just want to put a gun in front of them. And in my world settings here, just change this to first person game mode. Let's press play and see what happens. So I pick up that gun and there I am hitting my balls off my splat and getting a collision. So if you want to play with balls and splat, keep watching my videos and like and share. We're often ready, but we've got a splat in there and we're throwing balls at our splat. Enough of that. Thanks very much for watching.